Evening guys, so the History of Hearthstone tournament concluded last Wednesday. Uh, it was the sixth week and I placed top four where there was a winners and losers bracket to get to the finals and uh, happy to say uh, that I made it to the finals and actually won. Um, I wasn't completely happy with my performance. I made a misplay in each of the sets, pretty big ones I thought, uh, but luckily uh, my decks that I brought managed to counter a few of the other decks that were being run in the tournament and I, I think I played well enough to uh, um, justify it I guess. Uh, I didn't misplay too much but I definitely wasn't happy the way I played. Uh, I did end up losing my first game against Nyria, uh, so I, I dropped down to the loser's bracket um, but I don't want to give away uh, any of the other games. Obviously I won the tournament so you know I, I, I took down the whole thing but it was a very very interesting four sets to get there. In the description of the video, I'm going to list all the decks that I used. Uh, I'm going to put in the VODs for the entire tournament. So going from week one to week six, the finals, I'll list the VODs in there. They're available on Tempo Storm's YouTube channel and Tempo Storm's Twitch channel, so you can view them there. But what I thought would be fun would be to go over some of the decisions that I made in game. So I've got on my left hand side screen here. Uh, a bunch of clips that I thought were pretty pretty interesting from the tournament. Uh, I won't give too much away. I, I'm only going to show four or five clips, so I won't give uh, a lot of the games away. But I, I had a few, uh, I saw a few comments saying uh, at one point I threw a match against Orange, and I'll explain why, why I didn't throw the match and what my win conditions were. So there's a lot of misguided thoughts about one of my plays in the uh, Druid versus Hunter match. Also, I miss Lethal. I didn't realize I'd miss Lethal, obviously. <laughs> I didn't realize that to the day after, but I did miss Lethal in one of the games, so I, I, we'll go over that one as well, because that's one of the bigger misplays that I uh, uh, I made uh, was an actual miss Lethal against Nyria in the first set. Uh, so, yeah, let's take a look at some of the clips. We have a Reno Hunter versus a Dead Man's Hand Warrior. Uh, all of the Reno Hunter Dead Man's Hand Warrior matches are pretty interesting. In fact, I think all the Reno Hunter games had, had some form of interest in decision making in them with the Zombies. Uh, but we're going to look at the first set, game number four, uh, against Nyria. And we come to a point in the match where I hit the Zombies button, and my first choice is Weasel. Now, I took a few moments to think about it. Dead Man's Hand deck, i played this deck many times. And uh, I know for a fact that if you want to go infinite, it's very, very difficult to shuffle in when you're getting Echo cards. Especially, especially Weasel, right? A Weasel is not a card that you want to top deck. So what I do here, I pick the Weasel and an Echo Rush mechanic, which is one of the Hounds, and I wait. I don't play the Weasel straight away, because I have Corpse Widow in hand, so when I drop Corpse Widow on turn, the next turn when I have 10 mana, I can effectively play 5 Weasels along with it, so it'll give Nyria potentially 5 bad top decks throughout the game. And the Weasel, he can never play the Weasel and Deadmans on the same turn, because the Weasel will Echo, and when he Deadmans... It'll copy it back into the deck anyway, because all echo mechanics, when you deadmans them, no matter if you play the card or not, it echoes it back in. So I knew playing the Weasel and playing the uh, the Corpse with at the same turn would be the best choice. You might just dump this Revenge and then pass, because he just he basically lets Dane develop into it. And Revenge doesn't seem going to be super relevant, because if he gets below, if he gets 12 health and below, most likely he's just going to lose if he doesn't have an answer to the board anyways. Yeah, and this is definitely a, a place where you can, if you want to, assume the pose of the Justicar Warrior, because it's it's just four on board. You tank that up anyway. It's just not a big deal. Wow, bring it on. Bring it on, by the way, is a card that will let Dane go absolutely <laughs> nuts if it gets played. Oh, oh that is scary. Please. I just want to see big combos. I mean, Neri doesn't have Brawl in the hand, though, so that is pretty scary. If he is running Brawl, that is. Which I assume that he might at least have one comp, um, one copy of it. I was going to say, yeah, maybe one copy. when If he's playing Brawl, uh, sorry, playing Warpath and Revenge, yeah. then, yeah, maybe double Brawl then becomes surplus to requirements. So Nyria mills us a few cards. Unfortunately for us, it's not too critical for the matchup. Uh, and we also lose the uh, Zombies uh, Lich card, which we don't really care about. So this is the turn that we take the opportunity now. We just go straight for the play that I had in mind. So we go straight for the Corpse Widow into Echo. Zombies, 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 Zombies. So we put five Echoed Weasels in the deck. Now, at this point, in my opinion, 
the game was the game was nail in the coffin, right? As soon as you play Rexor against the Control Warrior, it should well, especially against the Devant Hand Warrior, it should be nail in the coffin anyway. But this was it. This cemented it. It made Nyria's future plays impossible to go infinite. It made his it made his Devant Hands impossible to gain value for removal and armor gain. So this this was basically it. And also as a counter effect, if Nyria ever wanted to get rid of these weasels from his hand. He would stop me from going into fatigue on top of that. So it's like a double-edged uh, sword for Nyria, drawing and playing these cards. So we'll basically, in this matchup, we'll skip to the end. We can see two zombies, two of the uh, weasels in Nyria's hand. He's lost one of his dead man's hands because he rightly played that out before, getting as much value from his removal as possible. And we can see the board he's facing down is pretty powerful. we got a 5-7, a Belcher, and uh, uh, a Kanye Grandmother. And the next turn... We've also got here another five, so well, as many zombies as we can basically fit on the board. <laughs> so we even put them under more, more pressure and more bad turns for the uh, for the future. So that that basically seals the uh, the deal for this game. I thought that was a pretty interesting one. Zombies, so good against a, a deck that wants to go infinite, a deck that wants to drop you into fatigue. It's very difficult for them to manage their removal correctly. As long as you pick the right zombies and you press on that button every time. Uh, that should be like, uh, in my opinion, around about like an 80-20% win rate. The 20% being you don't draw the, the Death Stalker Rex or, uh, early enough, or somehow the Control Warrior manages to mill the dead Stalker, Death Stalker Rex or, but I think that uh, it's a very low percentage for the Warrior to win that game. Pretty much like Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior. So the next one I wanted to go through, I saw a lot of comments in Twitch chat when I watched the VODs back, because I wanted to see how many misplays I could notice I was doing. And for the purpose of making this video, so I noticed a lot of people, this is the orange game where I play Reno Hunter versus Malagos Druid. Um, and a lot of people said we both played badly, and I don't think that's at all correct. Orange forgot the, the way that the Zombeast worked with regards to Dread Scale and Poison. And the play I made before that was the absolute correct play, I'm going to tell you why. So we joined the game here, Orange... Uh, has one Scarab on board, and we're just going to skip forward a little bit here. Next turn he plays his Death Knight and goes for two Poison Spiders, which is very difficult for me because I want to develop my board and start pr putting pressure on Orange. You notice I've got Rat in hand. I, I don't feel comfortable using the, the Rat yet because Orange has so many cards in his hand. Uh, I have been tracking his hand a little bit, and Orange has been playing from the uh, the right-hand side of his hand quite you know quite a bit, but... Uh, I still feel like it's not a good time to rat just yet. And the rat is my win condition, by the way. But also applying pressure is as well. So I go for a poisonous zombiest here. So I go for coin and play. Now this is a stealthed poisonous zombiest. And due to an update recently, um, it doesn't break stealth anymore. It used to break stealth. In any other matchup, right? Any other board-centric matchup. I'm going to explain this. Any other board-centric matchup. Where you'd have, like, maybe like even shaman. Or you'd have like uh, odd, odd paladin, right? Wherever there's like fighting for board presence, this card's a bonkers, right? It's insane. It's like an auto win if they don't have some kind of AOE clear, like a quality consecrate or whatever. This this card wins the game outright. Done. I'm playing against a Malagos Druid, right? Malagos Druids do not play minions typically until they are ready to kill you with the combo. They also have poison seeds, right? This card. Was good in that situation, killing the two poisonous spiders, because I want to develop further. It's very good, right? It dealt with that particular scenario. It killed the two spiders, it killed the scarab. Excellent. This card now is a hindrance to me. I can't develop any more minions because of this card. So ignore the rat in this situation. People might say, play rat, and then the poison will deal whatever minion pops out. Forget that. I've got Hunter's Mark and Quick Shot. That's my other win condition. This now is a hindrance, because I want to develop minions on my board over time if i develop minions on the board that dread scale will kill my minions right so think of that people have been saying i threw the game by unstealthiness how if he if he plays the combo i die it doesn't matter this is an end of turn effect right it, it's nonsense people the people are saying this was a throw or this was an idiotic move to unstealth this minion i can't understand the logic they've probably never played malagos Druid or played against Malagos Druid. My rat might not hit properly. 
So I, I cube this so I can play other cards. So we, this is where we see the little bit of a miscalculation. Faceless manipulator on my cube. Then orange kills off his own cube, thinking the um, the whirlwind poison effects will kill the cube and then whatever sits behind it. But what, what ends up happening is um, they end up just both killing each other and the cube death rattle effect doesn't go off to the end of the turn. That kills all other minions. Wait, is he doing it? But, 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 I don't, but, um, is this gonna, I don't think um, this might work the way he thinks um, it. Oh no! Um, orange, mate, friend, sorry. <laughs> Yo, he's gonna kill his own board! What are you, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Concede in shame right now! And then the uh, the final bit is we play our office because our board's going to wipe at the end of our turn. So we just go for an office and play dead to get as many Lich King cards uh, as we possibly can. The key one is Death Grip because that adds a second layer to our, our win condition at this point. So we hit it, get a Death Grip, Aviana pulls, and that at that point should be around about GG. Um... And then orange can see that at that, that, that juncture. Uh, Malagos Druid can still win with the Death the Death Knight. They can still win with Death Knight and attack, but because I've got my Drexar up, it's really difficult for them to to do so. Okay. Uh, next is my least favorite set. I'm going to show a clip from one of these. This is the set I think I played the worst, and it was uh, versus Delay. I made like at least one small mistake in each of the games. Uh, and one big mistake against uh, Silence Priest that when I was playing Druid. But we're going to look at one of the one of the uh, one of the games here where it's uh, Silence Priest versus Reno Lock. Um, so we'll start with a, an early early point in the game. I go for a, uh, a Bran and Nomferatu turn to try burn either Inner Fire or one of the um, one of the activators for it, maybe like Potion. I end up getting a Dragon and, and uh, Dark Bane, whatever she's called. Uh, which actually plays into it a bit later. That's why I wanted to show you that uh, initial bit of the clip here. Um, so I didn't click on to what version Delay was playing for a while. He's actually playing the Acolyte version where you uh, you drop a minion's damage to two, you steal it with Potion of Madness, buff it up, and then attack him with the uh, with the minion. Or, you know, you, Zelay could obviously buff his own minion and swing him for a huge amount of damage. But I didn't click on to a certain point in the game Um that's the way he was, was playing that uh, combination of cards. So we're joining the match where I have Emperor Forreston and Kazakus up. And Zelay buffs my uh, Emperor. Uh, and at this point, I suddenly it suddenly dawns on me that... I should have realised sooner. It suddenly dawns on me that he's playing the Acolyte uh, version of the deck. So I, I start to internally panic a bit, thinking, well, this is this is going to be it soon. It's, it's late in the game. We've gone beyond turn 10. Zelay's got to have at least three or four parts of the combo here. Uh, little did I know, the only thing he was missing at this point was a dragon. All he needed was a dragon. So I, I kind of like uh, cog start working, thinking if he if he uh, has the combo next turn that he just drew into, that we would be dead. So I have, I tap first. <laughs> it's a bit. Of, it's it's kind of like a, it's a mistake for me not to realize sooner. And uh, in this case, obviously I can't see his hand. It's kind of a mistake for me to do this play, but I go for a Shadow Flame on my own, uh, on my own Emperor Forreston, basically, to try to try prevent this lethal coming up. Uh, but little did I know, I didn't know Zelay had also a Nightmare in his hand from Ysera played earlier. Um, so lucky for me, that burn of the dragon was a little bit relevant from before. Uh, <laughs> So at the start of the game, turn five, we burnt one of Zelay's dragons, and at this point in the game, he had uh, he had used the relevant dragons like Ysera and stuff like that to try game board presence to uh, establish an, like the, the turn where he was going to kill me. And now, luckily for us, he's stuck without a dragon. But I don't know that yet, by the way. And this is this is the key point here where again it goes. My mind starts ticking over here. I realize suddenly when he plays the Argent Wormrest, he hasn't got a dragon. There's no dragon available to him, so I, I instantly thought, oh, well, this is it now, I, this is my chance, I'll play, if I play uh, Void Lord and Doomsayer out, if he doesn't top deck a dragon now, on the next turn, I'm going to have like three, um, I'm going to have three Void Walkers up, and then I can play Nazoth, and then I can have 
Void Lord, and uh, a bunch of like free ones up as well. So this is great. So this is the turn I go for like a Void Lord and a Doomsayer play. So people are probably wondering in chat why I sh why 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 was that a Shadow Flame? I, had, I saw some questions when I was watching the vods back. Why did I Shadow Flame? Uh, why did they then choose to play Doom so along with the uh, free nine taunt? So that was just some of the thinking there. The more taunts I can get, the more protected I am get against Slave from doing a, a a one turn kill where he steals my minion. Just just to the winning part now, where you see the board state. Uh, I play Blood Reaver Gul'dan, and I uh, I managed to get back uh, another taunt. I get back uh, a Void Lord, Void Caller. Sorry, I get I get back a Void Lord, Void Walker, and I'm pretty I'm pretty secure in that one. That that was it. But yeah, it's one of the one of the mis one of the big misplays in my mind. I made just like I should have realised a lot sooner. I shouldn't have played the uh, Emperor Forest. And I should have planned for this a little bit more. But uh, luckily, I put that victory down to Bran and um, known for R two. <laughs> Right, so I didn't want to. I don't want to spoil too many things. Uh, a lot of the clips have already. A lot of the clips I've shown are. Um, I've already been seen on uh, Twitter and a few compilations. So hopefully, I didn't spoil too much. The last game I wanted to show because I had. A, I saw a few questions uh, about this play. It, it was uh, against Nyria, the first game in the last set in the final match. It was um, me on um, Malagos Druid. It was me on Malagos Druid and Nyria on Togwaggle Druid. Uh, I've played this matchup a lot in Wild. If you go up to ten cards as well, they can just play Targwaggle and and uh, and, and demolish you. Uh, if they get the combo before you, they just end up stealing a lot of the combo pieces from your deck. So I knew in this matchup, I had to play both UIs right and and risk overdrawing a combo piece and try and draw all the combo pieces that I could before Nyria hit his. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll join. This game, when we uh, set off our first UI, so we trigger our first UI, and um, you can see that our draw is not too great. We hit, we do hit Malagos, um, but there's not too many combo pieces in that initial UI. Malagos and Kun are drawn off, so we're still missing um, Ixlid and Aviana, and we got a couple of burn cards. We got Swipe, we got Moonfire. But in this matchup, that's it's it's not it's not good. It's not good enough. We have to rush as fast as we can. Um, we have to play both UIs. We just have to risk overdrawing. Uh, we can't allow Nyria to get ahead of us in this situation. So we'll join the point where I play the uh, the second UI. So very risky. Um, yeah, at this point in the game, I, I have a Moonfire in hand and and uh, eight cards. So uh, I hit the Moonfire face and then UI his uh, Unstable Ghoul um, and then start praying basically <laughs> that I don't overdraw a key card. Uh, the reason I throw my hands up straight away is because I can see when you play UI you can see the stacks of cards that you're going to draw and I could see that one legendary card was at the end of the draw list uh, and I thought oh god it's Aviana. I've just, I've just, I've just, not through but I've just like lost the... Uh, I've just lost my final combo piece, and you know I wouldn't say it was a throw. It's a necessary risk you have to take in this matchup. Uh, luckily for me, it was just Ixlid. But as I mentioned before, I went to ten cards. So all Nyria has to do here to uh, close this game out is hit his uh, hit the Togwaggle. I won't get a copy of the ransom in my hand, and that's uh, that's basically the GG of the uh, of that match. But I had a few questions as, as to why I went for double UI so so quickly when I had uh, multiple cards in hand. Uh, it, it is for that reason. Against Togwaggle, I'd only really do it against Togwaggle or if uh, you thought you were going to die over the next two turns. Uh, it's to go for a double UI and rush. You have to rush that draw. You have to rush that draw. There's a few matches and scenarios where I think you have to do that. Um, Control Warrior is one of them because you want to try uh, get your combo pieces before they get their wrath as well. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I did the right thing in that match. I I just got a little bit unlucky. I didn't get the Aviana because if I had, if I did get the Aviana there in that uh, in that game, we I think we could have burst him down or, or at least put enough pressure on him to where the point was. Uh, if when he, even if he did swap the deck out there, we could probably pressure him down with our uh, with our hero power essentially. Um, so they're the clips I wanted to go over. Like I say, check out the entire. VODs right from week one to week six if you're interested in this tournament really fun 
It goes back through all the ages of Hearthstone. The first week you can only use basic cards. The second week was GVG Naxxramas. And then it unlocked a certain amount of uh, sets from each week. Uh, week six was every card from every set was unlocked apart from four banned cards. Uh, the VODs are, like I say again, available on Tempo Storm's channel, YouTube and Twitch. You can see them all there. Really interesting. Final was great. Uh, really glad to be uh, be a part of it. Thanks for everyone that tuned in live and, and was uh, showed some support as well. Uh, I'll see you guys in another video very soon. Sorry to go through my uh, ramblings in my head when I was playing those games, but uh, I just wanted to give my thoughts and uh, as to why I played those certain ways. And I'll also show you the clip I missed lethal and see if you can find it. Because I didn't find it. Uh, we'll put the Miss Lethal clip at the end. It's only about 10-15 uh, seconds long. But uh, I, I, after I watched the VODs, I saw everyone shouting Miss Lethal. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, it, it was a great tournament. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. Hoping that Dame maybe would have been able to take the Aviano with the Sylvanas deal as well. Because, man, that would have been so cool for Dane to have his ability to just go off with one-cost minions. This game has gotten really wacky, which is, I think, what the charm is of Wild. The fact that you get to see all these ridiculous board swings back and forth. Dread Scale Swipe seems like a thing, by the way. Just yeah. gonna throw that out there. That seems... That's, like, really insane. <laughs> you will need the uh, Aviana still active to be able to do that though. Although I guess he has a copy of Innovate left, right? In his deck, he still remain. Hmm. Assuming, assuming he's running his oh, yeah. I mean, he could also just play Minor Maze. I mean, Dean has the board lead, sort of. The reason why I say sort of is because it's pretty flimsy and a spreading play can put a big hole there. Oh wait, I got my bad Hunter legendaries mixed up. Dreadscale's the, the three mana boy, not the. It's uh, Acid Maw that I was thinking of, right? Oh, uh, well, I mean, it's still good. I thought you meant yeah. like a two damage to everything.